Okay, welcome everybody. Good afternoon to you all. It's a pleasure having you here once again. We are today with a very special edition of our monthly hangout. We are finishing the boot camp for Road to Web Summit uh, program. We started this year for the first time in Porto and today and tomorrow in Lisbon. So uh, a lot of um, rich sessions with uh, uh, teachers, trainers, participants from the ecosystem. Today morning we had the Minister of Economy also having uh, a very uh, thoughtful and inspiring words to our community and to, the, to this group. And well, we are happy because we, are, we have the largest number ever of uh, startups participating in Road to Web Summit, one, 115 this year. And we have it in partnership with uh, good partners of ours, which uh, will assure a very diverse and very inclusive group of uh, representatives for Portugal this year. So we have partnerships with Bantuman, Jassi Africa, and Casa do Impact. Impact. A round of applause to them, please. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I'd like only to give you two small uh, specific points on our ecosystem brief, as usual. are developing, uh, has just signed an agreement, a partnership agreement with f the Founders Institute. I think you know it's the world reference in uh, teaching and upskilling um, uh, programs for incubators and for startups. They are really, really, really professionals and really um, very uh, efficient and recognizable on the work they do worldwide. And so it's, uh, it's for us a very uh, proud and um, important uh, step to do. Um, and this with this in with this uh, within this partnership, we will provide to incubators, teams, the possibility of upskilling their capacities and uh, stepping up in their management skills and their capabilities in order to provide additional and better service services to our startup. So this will be called Startup Portugal Incubator Lab, and it's a partnership between Startup Portugal and the Founders Institute. Um, well, we also, uh, I would like also to have, to, to say to you that uh, we will this year have, we'll have a, at the Web Summit a, a fantastic stand that will represent Portugal and Lisbon at the conference. Um, we will do obviously this in partnership with Web Summit, with Municipality of Lisbon, uh, and with the Portuguese government, and we will uh, provide their contacts, networking, and possibility of providing information, offers, and well, discussions in our stage about everything that Portugal has to offer to startups, to entrepreneurs, and to tech 
uh, enthusiastic. So I strongly recommend you and all your uh, contacts and friends uh, visiting the Web Summit to go there and to make the Portuguese uh, stand as your home at the Web Summit, as your base as at the Web Summit this year, because it will be amazing and we really are um, enthusiastic about it. Um, well, I would like to stress also that Road to Web Summit uh, program is a partnership between Startup Portugal, Web Summit, uh, and GALP. Uh, besides Bantum and Jassi Africa and Casa do Impact, these three entities that I referred are the ones that um, organized and that partnership in order to make this program possible. So thank you very much to our partners. And um, I would like uh, also to thank the partners for the our monthly hangout. We are at Ferroviario. They always welcome us in Lisbon every month. And we thank them a lot for this availability. And we al also are in Oporto. Uh, Porto. Uh, Porto. Uh, can you listen to me? Are you there? Yeah, yeah. OK, thanks. Okay. And I, this presence, uh, this simultaneous presence uh, in Porto uh, is possible because we have a partnership with the Porto City Hall and uh, with Selina. Um, that is where they, they are in Oporto. Uh, and with a 351 community that also help us to uh, put this in place. And finally, UP Tech, which is our local partner, also very well connected to the um, to the um, ecosystem we'll we'll start by a uh, start of pitches and after that we'll have a very rich conversation at in this hang hangout moderated by uh, mariana bandeira thank you mariana S she's a journalist at journal economic and we are very glad to have uh, in our panel uh, martina guzman pitch coach at best three minutes margarida david startups lead uh, team lead at the Web Summit, Cesar Martins, CEO and founder of Kemi Tech, and João Guimarães, CEO and co-founder of Intuitivo. They have participated in the last editions of the program and the conference, and we are very glad to, to have them here. So, thank you very much. I'll pass on to Diogo in order to present the, uh, sorry, to João, in order to present the, um, the pitch sessions. And well, thank you, and see you all. Thank you, Antonio. Uh, first, I would like to call in Porto Marta Costa from Carrion Therapeutics to pitch her company. Marta, Marta. are you there? I'm here, I'm here, yes. The stage is yours. The stage is yours. For the presentation? Okay, so I am Marta from Carrion Therapeutics, and today I am here to talk to you about cancer. So imagine that you are one of the 900,000 people that is diagnosed with a very aggressive cancer, such as triple negative breast cancer or renal cell carcinoma. You will face very aggressive treatments with several side effects, and in the end, you may anyway be part of the 90% of people that die within the next five years. So imagine that we could offer you a treatment that is more effective and less toxic than current treatments. Would you take it? At Carrion, we have developed our top secret molecule, KT408. And our preclinical data in animals have shown that this treatment is effective able to reduce tumors in 65% in only seven days, and also outperforming clinical uh, standard treatment for RCC or TNBC. It is also a safe treatment with no detected side effects. KD408 is different from any other drug in the market, uh, as such as chemotherapy, monotherapy, or targeted therapy. It is an epigenetic tar therapy that targets the very source of the aggress aggressiveness behavior of the cancer. So that means that by this, we can stop several tumor drivers. These are features that are responsible for the fast progression and aggressive progression of the cancer. 
So in that way, we will be able to not only act on one pathway of cancer, but on several and at once. And also, uh, it activates tumor suppressors that are responsible to kill and stop the tumor. So KT408 will be a breakthrough therapy to use in clinics and will um, increase the uh, cancer patients' chances to survive. So in the next three years, we will raise 3.5 million euros to finish preclinical trials uh, and also to address regulatory requirements. In our first round, we want to raise uh, 750K to strengthen our technology and to further protect it. So by doing this in the second round, we will be able to attract a big biotech VC that will help us to conclude the preclinicals. Our first medical indications are renal cell carcinoma and triple negative breast cancer. But we can achieve a much larger um, market because of the breakthrough mode of action of our top secret molecule. So, um, based on similar uh, deals, uh, our technology is uh, valued at $1 billion right now, but at the end of the preclinical, it will be $3 billion. We have a complementary team with expertise in science, but also in business, supported by an amazing group of advisors. And we truly, we believe that it takes all of us to fight cancer. Thank you. Thanks, Marta. Now it's time to call João Sand Lemos here in Lisbon to pitch us. Round of applause. I saw after the pitch. So is this working? Yes. So hi guys, my name is João, and I am one of the co-founders of Talent Kickers. But sorry. So. This is inverted. Doesn't ah okay, sorry, yeah, yeah. yeah sorry sorry for the technical issue. So guys, if you have kids, probably you know that it's super complex and hard to to help them develop their talent, especially if it's if it's football. So basically, in one end you have the kids, basically from fi five to fifteen, that love to play football and just want to enjoy and develop their skills. On the other end, you have the parents that want to be present in the group of their children and want them to be happy. The problem is that the kids usually in this age, they resort to parents or some kind of relative to help them develop their skills. However, the parents don't have time, don't have the know-how, and don't know how to help them. And that's why we believe that this creates a lot of friction, especially in the country as Portugal, with, which is f uh, football as a, a main sport, uh, and leads to talent waste, and sometimes also to uh, unhealthy pressure in the children's development. And that's the reason why we create Talent Kickers. So basically, this is an interactive and engaging um, two-sided platform that takes parents and, and kids into a journey of mastering football skills, helped by powerful content and feedback AI. And it's super simple to use, actually, basically in three steps. So it's, a, it, it's an app, so the kids only have to download, uh, uh, install, register, and watch some drills and some exercises. The parents record and submit the videos to get AI feedback, and they together review trustful feedback and actually try to improve the skills of the kids while they progress in football academia. So basically, Talent Kickers, it's a mobile app that uh, evaluates how kids perform in training exercise and gives them feedback to progress. It provides you a lot of training uh, plans and videos with drills to do the exercise, the correct exercise for that age. It actually uses a um, uh, video processing engine to give feedback based on the videos that parents submit in the application. And it actually creates like a scorecard and a player profile that helps children develop and also can be shared, if parents allow, with football clubs and other kinds of scouters and agents. So basically, our business model is super simple. It's a subscription-based. Kids can have free access to the platform with limited features unless they connect to a parental access and we charge parental access with a monthly subscription of 6.99 per kid uh, per month. And we believe this is a fair price because parents are willing to help 
to play this if they see the kids are progressing. And of course, coach and scouters that play also here a big uh, role are willing to endorse this kind of at-home complement training plan. And we are in Portugal, so we believe that we have here a perfect benchmark to launch this idea. And of course, nowadays, we have always Brazil and, of, and uh, with a lot of players in Middle East Asia, which is quite of an interesting market for us. So, we believe that this is a unique app that combines a lot of things that are trying to be done in, in the market, especially this kind of parents and children relationship, also player scorecards, a lot of features and rules that already exist, and most recently, some kind of platforms are showing that it is possible to do video processing for individual exercises and provide feedback based on algorithms. That, that's why we are taking this technology to uh, bring it to improve this relationship between um, parents and their, their children. So basically we have been doing this uh, since uh, July, so it's quite, quite recent. We have been uh, helped by Startup Lisboa in their incubation program. Uh, and we are now in the stage where we are validating our product. So we have a prototype, a, a working website, when we have already um, 50 customers. And in the next month, we are going to try to scale it and test the willingness to pay off the customers to, to see the adherence of the market. And our goal is to finish the year with uh, 500 subscription, uh, paying um, the, the, the subscription that I showed. We'll be at Web Summit this year, uh, so we'll see you there. So this is our team. Miguel, uh, uh, which is not here, but he's also a co-founder that has a lot of experience in professional football uh, and played uh, uh, till his 20s and now plays in amateur leagues. Myself, that I've been doing product development, app development, digital marketing for a major uh, telco in Portugal. And we are aiming to onboard till the end of the year a uh, CTO to help us develop this, this, this final vision and the first product. So thank you very much for the invitation. Thank you for listening to me. We'll meet at the Web Summit. Thank you. Thank you, João. Now back to Porto, and let's listen to George Boabide from Plants. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm George Boabide, one of the co-founders of Plants. What's Plants? Our mission is to make eating nutritious, plant-based food accessible and convenient. I could spend all my five minutes here today talking about how important it is to take action towards a plant-based eating or why we should all be eating better. But let's focus on customer pain points. People want to be better, people want to eat better, but very few can act on it. Why? We asked it and we found that people are afraid of not getting enough macros, micronutrients, protein from a plant-based diet. And also, there is a lack of time, knowledge, and market offers to transition into it. So we focused on creating high-protein, plant-based food for B2C and, um, lately, for B2B. Our solution is based on three pillars. Nutrition, ease of use, and extreme taste. We are bringing a series of incremental innovations to this, this um, offer. We are bringing like uh, the deep freezing technique that preserves flavor, texture, nutrients, and uh, guarantees us zero waste from production to consumption, and also how fast and how far we can uh, reach with our solution using some innovations in uh, materials and also on logistics. We are working in a resegmented market that both of the, the composition of this market, the red tweet meals and the online food delivery are growing consistently year over year. So it's, it's the right time to do this. Our business model is based on B2C. It's the, the main part of it. We sell red tweet meals, deep frozen. So basically the customer can enter into our website, buy what they want and receive it in only one day. Or if you are at Porto, you can receive it at, in 15 minutes. On the Oraca channel, we are allowing restaurants to have vegan food to serve to their clients without having to invest on uh, equipment, uh, overhead expenses, and also buying different ingredients. So they have the um, high protein, high quality meal to serve to their customers with zero effort. This is the founder team. I'm, from the, I'm in charge of execution. 
Rodrigo is running operations, Felipe is focused on growth, and Lucas is the guy that knows everything about plant-based nutrition. So far, more than 600 customers, direct customers, high recurring rate, and it's important to note that we have no subscription model, so it means that people are solving their problems with our solution, they are coming back. And on the B2B side, we have we are just getting started. We have one big customer that are working in more than 40 restaurants with our solution, the B2B solution. As key partners, I can highlight here our logistic partners, Zor Thermal, MRW, Bairro e Nunha. All together, they represent a really interesting way on how we believe we can scale this business to other regions. And uh, the outsourcing partners, it means that we can have scale without having to buy um, expensive equipment. So far, uh, growing two times from last year, we last month started marketing and selling to Spain, and we have been quite successful in some acceleration programs. We have participated, and next week, we are starting the front startup table from Startup Lisboa. So this is our projection. We think we can keep growing two times year over year. Uh, but in order to do this, we are seeking an investor, a pri private investor. So uh, we are asking for 200K in, uh, to keep and to, to make it possible. So if you are interested or if you know anyone that may be interested, uh, I'm more than happy to, to hear you. So reach us out. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Jorge. Now to end our pitching session, let's welcome Liliana Rosario from Circular Closets here in Lisbon. My name is Liliana Cosario, and thank you, and thank you for being here. I am the founder of Circular Closets, and I wanted to share that last week when I was preparing my pitch, I, I was seated next to my daughter, and I asked her, "Do you know why Circular Closets exists? Do you know why we are launching soon the um, the library collection?" And sometimes it's good just to ask kids because they give simple answers, and she just responded right away. She said, yes, circular closets exist, so when you have an event, uh, you can just book from the designers and return it. And yes, that's it. It's a simple solution that, in fact, solves a very, very important problem, the problem of the short life cycle of the products. As you might know, the fashion industry is one of the most polluting industries with overproduction, with overstocks, and we truly believe that circular fashion is art. So why not bring the artists with us? Why not bring the designers to circularity? And that's what we are doing. This side. Uh, yes. So in other words, we are empowering the designers, the artisans, while extending the life cycle of quality pieces. It means that we are building a trustworthy platform We're building a trust trustworthy platform where you can book, you can sell, you can uh, boost the sales from the designers. And we are also empowering the designers with data, with tech. Oh, thank you, thank you very much. And in our platform, as a user, you can get designer pieces for a fraction of the price and have the full experience with the designers. As an IN designer, it means that you are in control of your bookings, you have an integrated calendar, where you can connect with your clients, build a trustful relationship. That means returning customer, more people um, looking forward to connect with the designers and prolong the life cycle together. Thank you. And we have more than 600 registered clients. We are onboarding the first designers. And we know that re retailers are already 
uh, getting into sustainability and to and they they come for the sustainability sustainability but they stay to drive revenue and we'll do the same with the designers the size of the market is considerable also for the in Europe our business model is commission based but only uh, also subscription thank you and this is I will stand from our competition. You might have heard about other platforms, but we are really focused on the experience of the, with the iron designers, and we are providing the designers tools so they can connect with them, with, with their audience, and, and provide them tech and data to, to boost their businesses. We are a team of uh, strong background in technology, but also in business. It's not only that. We are uh, happy folks. We are motivated. We are passionate about what we are doing. Thank you. And this is our roadmap. We, we launched before with the resale concept. At the moment, we are uh, launching the library collection at the Web Summit. And we are onboarding the, the designers. We are bootstrapping, and we plan that in uh, around a year have more than 1,000 registered designers in the premium plan. And this is our road to growth, and these numbers also mean that we are providing more impact to people, that we are bringing together with the designers more people to circularity. So this is my invitation for you to, to join us in this new era of impactful and self-expression, and let's, let's be an artist, let's come to, to circularity. And if you are connected with the Model Lisboa ecosystem, if you are connected with Porto, 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 Portugal fashion, please let chat and see how can we bring more designers to circularity. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Liliana. Now let's welcome our panel to today's discussion. First, Martina Guzman from Best Three Minutes and Margarida David from Web Summit here in Lisbon. And our lovely moderator, Patricia Rock. And now in Porto, Cesar Martins from Chemitech and João Guimarães from Intuitivo. And some applause for them too. <laughs> Hi. So Mariana is still stuck in the traffic, unfortunately, so she won't be able she'll be she will join us later, but she she will not be able to be here moderating. So welcome you all here in Lisbon and Porto. So maybe I would like to uh, start with you, Martina. Yes. If you had to choose three things that a pitch should have, what would they be? Um, three things. A clear problem. Sometimes we get lost in the idea, but we really need to say specifically what problem we are solving. Then a strong team because you need to show that behind that idea there is a stream capable to execute and make it happen. And uh, the third one, I will say definitely passion. You need to show that you're passionate about what you're doing and that you, be and that you believe what you're offering, what you're presenting, because the more you believe, the more you connect with your audience and they will believe as well in you. Okay, and Margarita, like, in a conference such as the Web Summit, which is so big, what are the main tips you give to participants and founders who are in the conference for the first time? Okay, so there are a few preparation steps I believe that all startups should take at the, at the event. So first of all, um, defining your goals. It's really, really important. This is going to define the strategy that you're then um, going to uh, adopt at the event. Um, goals that usually bring startups to the event would revolve around being able to engage with the startup ecosystem, so connecting with other founders, connecting with investors, um, leveraging their brand awareness, the lead generation, thought leadership, um, and also the possibility ability to, um, to create strategic partnerships. So it's really important to select a couple, three of them tops, so you can really focus on them um, and then define uh, your strategy for the event. 
Um, you have tools such as uh, the Web Summit app, where you're able to filter people according to their ticket type, so you can start doing um, that networking uh, in advance. You're able to see the talks that will be happening across the multiple stages that we have at the event, again, to make sure that you are uh, attending the talks that uh, are mostly, mostly, mostly sorry, uh, related to um, the content that you want to get from the from the event um, and then I think that pitching again preparing your pitching your pitch is so so important you're gonna be talking with people mm -hmm. from a wide range of profiles so the kind of information that an investor is looking for might not be the same kind of information that a possible lead or a client uh, or even a strategic partner is looking for so it's good to think about the different audiences you might be connecting with and prepare the information uh, in advance uh, just to make sure that you are as clear as possible and you go straight to the point. Okay, <laughs> thank you. And now to Porto, Cesar, your first web summit was in 2019, is that right? Yeah, I think so. I already we can't hear. More at least. <laughs> Just a moment. you said yes? Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so, <laughs> okay, so what what are uh, did you feel any of these pains that uh, Margarida and Martina were talking about when you were preparing for the web summit? Like, what were the main challenges you faced in your first edition? Yeah, I think our summit uh, changed a lot because in the first years we see not so much people and different approach because it's. Uh, before COVID and you have more connections with people. Mm. And I think he's preparing. Uh, see, analyze what is in the app, uh, what is your goal, if it's investment, if it's reach other startups and exchange some ideas and try to attract them. Uh, in my first year, I remember that in my badge, I put a QR code with a link to my pitch because if I pass for some new people, I show and they can automatically uh, download my pitch and see if they are interested in, in my company or not. And I see in a world with a lot of things happening each minute, we have to attract people to see you. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, and, um, João, as an EdTech uh, startup, uh, is it, how is it to navigate the Web Summit? Navigate like, what are the main uh, stakeholders for your company that you are looking for? and? How was it for you to meet them, and how did you do it? Okay, uh, from my side, I think, yeah, for sure, clients want to be one of them because we're selling to schools. Uh, but I think, for sure, uh, investors, number one. But I agree that, like, you need to prepare uh, beforehand or else no one's going to be interested in what you're going to say, probably. And you can try a lot of different tactics, like trying to get into the investor lounge, etc. Maybe I should mm -hmm. be saying this with uh, Margarita there. But um, maybe investors uh, and possible partners as well. Like I think the companies that we attract here uh, to Portugal in this, these days are super important. Uh, and I think we talked with a couple of uh, possible partners as well in Web Summit. So I think those two things, yeah. Okay. Margarita, what are the main things that startups like ask you to do or so and they're like eager to do maybe i assume that with investors this must happen a lot that they're very eager to talk to them and maybe they do some wrong things that do not necessarily do any good for their startup can you tell us some stories or some examples of things that are very common mistakes yeah, so I would say that um, what most startups are interested um, to do at the event would revolve around connecting with investors or participating in the pitch competition. Um, I guess that my main advice, especially for people don't, that don't make it to the pitch competition, don't forget that you have over 70,000 people that you can pitch to on a one-on-one -on -one basis. You can read how the person is uh, taking up the information that you're telling them, and you're able to um, 
provide the information according to what their body shows that they are more interested in listening. So um, don't think that you're missing out just because you're, you're not um, part of one of those activities. Of course, they are there because we see them as valuable for startups. But at the end of the day, there are so, so many opportunities to connect with people at the event um, that don't let yourself uh, close up a little if you don't get what you initially uh, expected from the event, I would say. Um, so that's one. And then on the investor side of things, uh, we do organize investor to start up meetings at the event. So these are dependent on an invitation that would come from the investor side. But what we always recommend is to um, also outreach to people of, of interest. Through the app, you're able to filter people according uh, to their ticket type, their industry, their geography. So you can go quite specific on, um, on uh, the people you want to connect with. And believe me, I always, always say this on my meetings with startups. And when I get to the event uh, and I ask them if they have explored the app before, most of them haven't. Please don't be one of these startups and take the time to explore the app. Um, because the most common mistake, I would say, is not making use of the preparation period. If you take the time to have a look at the profiles of the people you want to connect with, you also have more time to prepare a personalized message for those people and have a higher conversion rate on the messages that you're saying instead of just spamming every single person at the event with a message that uh, they don't really understand uh, the value of. Martina, we were talking uh, some minutes ago that there's this one common mistake, which is not preparing. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about that and what other mistakes do you see commonly uh, with the people you train? Yes, um, basically the preparation. You have a great opportunity when you're attending to one of these events and um, preparation, you know, there is always time for important things. So give it the priority. Uh, another mistake would be also not to work on how you man manage your nerves. It is intimidating, right, to, to speak in a stage, to approach somebody that you don't know and just present yourself, you know. So, you know, try to manage your, your nerves in a way, try to breathe as you're talking. And um, when you're pitching, try to give a space to the silence as well. Sometimes you see pitches that they're just like, -da 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 you know, you're like really, really hard to follow. So the moment you just bring a great idea, you just give it a little space so the other person can think about it and you just go on. Think that you're pitching to people, so make it human to human. And uh, as uh, Margarita was saying, you know, segment all the different kind of um, partners, you got partners, you got customers, you got potential collaborators, journalists, investors, of course, and prepare a specific pitch for each one. So you make it the conversation more, clar more clear and more to the point. Okay. Okay. Um, Cesar, what, what are your main goals when you're attending uh, the Web Summit? Probably mm -hmm. Chemitech will be a little different because, mm -hmm. as we know, is as they say, is liquid technology because we have a chemical product to clean panels. It's not mm -hmm. tech, not the SIS or software. Uh, for me, in the first years, is reach VCs, of course. And in 2019, I approached PV, uh, Portugal Ventures, and is one of our first investors. And right now, when I go, is to connect with other startups because we have the same goals. We have to sell the product. You have to imagine the human resource, we have to make another round. And it's exchanging information and the pain and the glories of each one, CEO or co-founder, and help each other. Uh, is promote the Chemitech mm -hmm. and exchange knowledge between the startups. Okay. Uh, and now a question for both of you. I don't know, uh, uh, João and Cesar, do you have any stories of uh, things that went wrong or some... Uh, during a web summit? Wrong. I don't think so. I, no. I, I, <laughs> interesting things, probably. Uh, yeah, interesting. I can I can go, but yeah. basically, I think in the first year that we went in 2021, I mm -hmm. think we went, as you guys were saying, like without any type of preparation. 
And in that year, I think it was funny because we just got there and in the first day it was like super overwhelming, tons of people and we had no clue what to do and we didn't have any meeting booked. And so, yeah, I think we learned with it. And in the next year, like, I think we prepared better. We talked with people beforehand. And that's actually how we ended up talking with, with Techstars, where we, we got in and we met her. We met them at, at Web Summit. So I think not a super funny story, but yeah, we went there and had no, no clue what we were doing, but it was fun. Yeah. And how's the process now of prep? Uh, how do you prepare? With your, do you go with your team? How, how does it work? Uh, in our case this year, we're seeing it as more like a team building uh, thing. So basically, I think we're not super into like g trying to raise a round in Web Summit. We're using it more as a team building to bring everyone and like we can learn, we can watch the, the speakers, we can be with each other, etc. in Lisbon because we're all from Porto. And so we're going to, to use it more for that. And of course, in the meanwhile, we're going to try each one of us to book his meetings or etc. to meet interesting people, startups, and maybe investors, we never know yet. Okay. Martina, another thing that we, we learned is that you also help a lot of women uh, on preparing their businesses. Do you think it's different to train, like as a woman, to, to train something? What, what are the main differences that you uh, see or that you apply when you're helping these uh, women to pitch and uh, present their businesses to investors well. or partners? <laughs> Uh, as, a pitch, as a pitch coach, I was first uh, a, woman, a woman founder. And I had, before becoming a pitch, before learning about the pitch, I had four startups. Uh, we got to solve the first one, mm -hmm. but it was just an act of luck, <laughs> literally, because I was never able to just stand on a, on a stage and pitch myself. It is well known that uh, we women, you know, women, uh, we have, yes, uh, I won't call it now a lack of confidence because life proves how confident we are in our daily life, day life. But yes, a startup entrepreneurship is a world basically dominated by men or mostly dominated by men. And it is not that they're closing doors to women. It is just that we are not knocking the doors. So. When I work with women entrepreneurs, yes, we work the pitch, yes, we work the, the audience, the goals, we go through the, all the development of the pitch, but we also work a lot of self-confidence. I do also with men, eh? it's, it's not only us, it's for them also. But I try to just build the pitch just from inside out. Because uh, after all, when you, when you stand on the stage, you know, you can have this story very well developed, but if you're not there with all your strength, with all your confidence, you know, you're really not there. So it is not only women, but yes, uh, on women, uh, we work a lot more the confidence. Okay, okay. Um, and for Margarida, what do you think we can expect this year? Uh, is there any kind of dynamic or anything that we can expect for this year that's any different or better? Um, so one of the things is actually the content that we're going to have uh, on stage. Uh, I can give you a few examples of new stages that we have at the event. We have mm -hmm. a AI um, aca Academy, Energy and Policy Makers. Um, so uh, interesting, right? <laughs> um, so. I guess that personally I'm the most excited uh, to see content from the AI Academy because we all know uh, how much it can help uh, businesses uh, leverage their activity and um, reaching different markets, etc. Uh, but it also raises a lot of questions around um, the ethicality of this technology. So we're going to be bringing people to, to discuss how these technologies are going to be regulated uh, across um, the European market. So I think that's going to be really, really interesting. Okay. Cool. Uh, for Joan Cesar, how y are you going to spend your time uh, on uh, at the conference? Like, do you spend more time usually at the talks or connecting in the booths? Like, what, what do you do mostly? For me, it's my it's more connecting with other people. Uh, I use a lot the app. Of course, you have to send very interesting messages to uh, answers of them. Uh, and part is know more people from other companies, for other VCs. 
uh, of course, you can go and see the stands and you can talk with someone and explain better the technology or exchange some knowledge. But for me, right now, uh, Web Summit is like uh, a point that a lot of funders that I know, we can talk together what happened in the next or the last year, what is our next obje objectives, and exchange some ideas. Yeah, uh, I think I agree. So, yeah, number one, try and get the meetings, talk with partners, with other startups, investors, etc. Uh, we're going to have a booth in one of the days, so in that day probably going to be there uh, a while. And I think something that we didn't talk yet about, is, which is like the side events and all the side events that happen uh, in Web Summit and in Lisbon in that week. I think that's very important as well, like you had a chance to, to talk with a wider network, maybe not everyone is in the event and you have a more like maybe a more um, closed space to talk with some people. So I think that's also something very important that, that you should try to, to get into, yeah. Okay, cool. So I'm going to make a last question, but just to, if you guys have any questions, just be prepared, okay? But I'm going to do so. The last question for you all is if you could give a do and a don't for participants this year, what would it be? Drinking water. That's the first thing that comes to mind. Keep hydrated. Don't forget to fill your water bottles. Um, but other than that, uh, I think that's a given. Um, it's also to remember to to have fun, to really have uh, that connection with the people that you're that you're talking with. Be present in the moment. I know that there are a lot of things happening, but it's important to um, really be present in that moment with the person uh, you're talking with, because um, then your message is just come across uh, in a much nicer way. Um, and a don't. Um, what would come to mind is please don't leave things on your booth the next <laughs> at the end of the day. We need to be mindful that there are other people exhibiting, so make sure that you leave a clean space for um, the other people exhibiting the next days. We need to be mindful of our own space and other people's places, so keep that in mind. <laughs> Good. Well, um, I will say as a do, uh, to make a plan before you go there. We were talking about that, to just really look at the app and check the people who are attending, who are these key people that you would really like to meet, and just go for them first and then have fun, <laughs> because you go there for business, <laughs> in my way, no? <laughs> uh, and as a don't, I will say uh, don't tell your life story or your company story to everyone, you know, think that you're there pitching and you're going to have 70,000 opportunities to pitch yourself. So the idea there is that you make that first connection to this person, you attract their attention and you start later a conversation. Doesn't have to happen at the web summit. It can happen after, over, over coffee or in one of the side events, as they're always, you know. That will be my, my, my do and don't. Okay, thank you. João Cesar? Apart, the first one is uh, do preparation. I think everyone talk about that. And we have a lot of people, and you have to bring attention for you or for your company, I think is the, the first goal. The don't, don't party at six, uh, uh, up to six in the morning, and you have to sleep well and be sharp for the next day, because it's one year after a year, and you have these three days to have the opportunity to talk with these people in that days. Yeah. For, me, for me, I think the do is bring comfortable cho shoes. Yeah, That's something that I learned in the hard way last year. Uh, as for the don'ts, uh, probably don't try to sneak into the investor lounge because you're, you're going to get expelled from it. Uh, and that's it, I think, yeah. <laughs> OK, thank you. Thank no, you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that's a very well. So do we have any questions in the audience? There's one right there. And if you can prepare in Porto, I don't know if there's any questions in Porto, <coughs> just, just let us know, please. Hi. Uh, Hi. Awesome. Uh, thank you so much for all of the advice and every, uh, like everything that you've mentioned. Uh, just one thing, so uh, obviously like we need to grab attention of the right people over there and there's so many people, so what do you think is the best way to filter out and not be rude while you're filtering out? Oh, I have, I have one, uh, we just share with the startups one strategy that we have for that. 
Um, basically, all conversations start with a question, right? So you, a lot of people will go with a purpose, but a lot of people will go just for curiosity. So you ask the question just nicely, as everybody does, you know, like, hey, how do you do? So you learn what the people do, you filter, because you have done the homework. Yep. And after that, you just give them like a brief pitch, but it doesn't have to be a 30, you know, very brief pitch of what you do. And if you see that this person is just there for curiosity, you know, just be kind, you know, because you never know who this person can know. Yeah. <laughs> and have something, have always something, some resource that you can offer that they can take a look after. Perfect. But don't waste time with people you don't need to. Be, yeah. be also intentional with, the, with your time. Um, I also would have an advice there, and it's actually something I took from this book. It's called The Power of Moments. Mm -hmm. And in order to make that connection, it's really important to understand what the other person is also looking for. So if you start the conversation by asking the person what they are looking for, then you can tailor the information that you're telling them. So, and they also feel hurt. So because they feel hurt, they are more willing to hear you. So um, that would be my advice. Perfect, thank you so Absolutely. much. You're welcome. Any questions in Porto? Okay, we have a shy, a shy audience. No, there are no <laughs> questions no? here in Porto. No? Okay. Okay, so let's Thirsty wrap. here. Ah, okay, ah. just one here, one here. Sorry, a last question then. Hi. Uh, hello. Yeah, uh, it's actually not a question. Um, it's it's a piece of advice, um, just from from my experience. Um, don't forget to follow up afterwards, um, because after Web Summit you'll be completely shattered, and you'll want to sleep for weeks. Um, so make sure you plan some time, maybe a week afterwards, to follow up all the contacts that you made, because if you don't do it, you know, within a few days, it will get lost and people will forget. So. Um, so fo don't forget to follow up. Uh, and, and also, uh, one other thing is, um, during the night summit, uh, there's, there's, because it's not just in the daytime, uh, there's a night summit, there's loads of possibilities to connect with people. Uh, there's also all the side events. You can find lists online of where the side events are. There's, there's, you, can, you can connect until like midnight, one o'clock, then go and <laughs> sleep. And then, and then do it again. So, so plan to sort of, it's not just from, from 9 till 6, it's 9 till 12 or you know, midnight or whatever. So make sure you plan for any, a very full day uh, and, and make sure you, <laughs> you rest afterwards. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. We, have, we really have to wrap up um, to close, but we can talk about uh, during drinks, okay? So thank you all for, for your presence here and... Uh, João and César up there. Thank you to the startups that pitched today. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.